it's been 25 years uh, in may last year so what is new with java in terms of java 16 a lot of what's in java 16 is built on uh, what's in the past uh, so we continue to focus on performance stability and security those are our three tenants around java but specifically when we look at java 16 java 16 is comprised of a lot of features um, that are predominantly focused um, on accelerating developer productivity. And you might say, well, what does that really mean? Um, so the way we sort of break out uh, our releases is in terms of language features, enhancements to the JVM, new tools and libraries, uh, you know, features for, for the future. So I can get into that a little bit, but also uh, accelerating uh, aspects of the OpenJDK project itself. If we look at the OpenJDK project itself, you know, one of the things we always look at is uh, infrastructure. We know the op you know, OpenJDK itself has been sitting on Mer Mercurial for, for uh, many years, uh, almost a decade, if not longer. Uh, and we understand that you know, new infrastructure uh, has uh, evolved. And so we've actually moved the entire OpenJDK project, starting with Java 16, to Git. So using Git as, as our uh, infrastructure also means we can now host uh, the release on GitHub, which is now very popular with developers. We see a lot of uh, development shops in the enterprise have automated CI and CD pipelines. And so by hosting uh, the OpenJDK project, uh, specifically our builds on GitHub, uh, accelerates that access to, to our releases. You have the six month uh, release cycle. You move to these release cycles, uh back in 2017. So how is that specifically working for you? Is How is that more advantageous to developers as compared to, uh, say, a yearly release cycle of sorts? That, that's a great question. And I, I, I'd like to give you a little peek behind the scene as well, if you don't mind. You know, here on the Java team, many of us have been with uh, the Java organization for almost two decades. And we all grew up in a time when the marketplace dictated that multi-year release model. Uh, enterprises as a, as a whole uh, were very slow to adopt new functionality and to evolve. But we now live in a world where modern application development requires fast evolution uh, and the ability to change rapidly. And so when we announced the move to the six month release model uh, back in 2017, it wasn't just uh, validating it to the world, it was also a validation to ourselves. Can we do this? And I have to say, you know, having started off uh, with Java back in 2000, one of the best things we could do and can do moving forward is stay uh, true to the six month release cadence. And I say that because what it does is offer enterprises guaranteed predictability. There's no longer a guessing game when I'm going to get access to Java. You know, our original commitment was every two years. But what happened was in that two-year release model, we would have something called feature drivers, a specific feature which we would commit on and say we would make that available with a said release. But as we know in engineering, in any organization, sometimes a specific feature takes a lot of time. And so if something with a specific feature that was pinned to a release took extra time, we would then have slippage of the schedule. So what we've now moved to is a time-based release model, which dictates when a feature is done is only when it will be released. So every six months, like clockwork, similar to the Linux model, we will release Java. And once a feature is done, it will land on a specific release. How can the developers keep up uh, as in there are new announcements coming in uh, every six months? So uh, what is Oracle doing from their part to make sure that they can stay ahead of the game and they are uh, reskilled also on and every six months cycle? That's another fantastic question. So what, uh, what we have introduced uh, since Java 9, in fact, uh, is the notion of early access builds. And this is critically important for all developers. What this does is give every uh, development shop an opportunity to look at a release before it becomes available. So you can do early testing ahead of the cycle to understand how that's going to affect your production line and your, your solution and your stack. So by having access to early access releases, 
gives everyone that 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 visibility into what is coming in six months on that on that general availability date. So that's number one. Number two, in terms of staying skilled, we also take feedback from developers. So through the Open JDK project, we have open and transparent development. And this is something that's critically important. Many enterprises and even so many Java developers don't realize we do all of our development in the open. There's no sort of hidden trick or magic or um, some sort of special uh, approach to this. All of our development is transparent through the OpenJDK project. Many developers uh, prefer Python or uh, JavaScript over Java for uh, AI ML. So what is your take on the future of Java in terms of AI ML, which is the predominant technologies today? It's understandable why developers choose Python. There's a very low barrier to entry in terms of learning the language, but in terms of scalability and the vastness of the libraries that are necessary to empower AI and ML, it's still a bit rudimentary. And that's one of the strengths of Java is, although it might be viewed as a complex language, it also handles complex problems. And AI and ML, as applications become, uh, uh, grow in scale and size and performance, creates a level of complexity. And so we're actually investing in AI and ML from a Java lens. Project Valhalla, which is in the OpenJDK project itself, is one of our areas that's specifically addressing uh, performance and density of machine learning language and big data. Uh, but coupled with that, outside of our Java organization, there's also groups within Oracle that understand the value of Java who are building uh, AI and ML libraries inherently starting in Java. So Tribio uh, is one of those places. It's an entirely uh, Java built AI and ML library uh, that taps into the power of, of, of Java itself. And it's been around, it's the most, it's one of the oldest uh, pro programming languages. What other advantages for the future does Java hold for developers and enterprises? Right. So, you know, it's always interesting when I get this question about, you know, language to language comparison. I, I'm a bit of a, a, a pragmatist uh, in that, you know, I, I've always advocated pick the right language and the right tool and the right framework for what your situation is. But understand situations may change. And ultimately, a lot of those situations lead back to Java. Either you can start in Java uh, or eventually as your ap application becomes more complex, and requires more performance, there's this gravitation to Java because it inherently does those things well. We can use, you know, Twitter is a canonical example in this space where it started off in Ruby. And uh, as, as, you know, the social media world exploded and the, you know, the high performance and density and scalability of the Twitter platform was needed, they rewrote their entire application in Java. So Java, you know, provides performance, stability, and security, uh, incremental improvements, with every release. Uh, and so that to me is what the future is. It's the future isn't something just that's new. The future is also retaining what is old and ensuring that those, those methodologies are not forgotten is what's gonna keep Java vibrant. The recent update had uh, 17 announcements. So if you had to pick out say three to five of the most important announcements <laughs> for enterprises, um, Maybe the You're, dream of the crop. Uh, you, you what would, what uh, would you say would enterprises yeah. find your most interesting from these? That is a very interesting question. Ask that question to 10 different developers and you'll get 10 different answers because it truly is a, a unique situation in that all of the features will have uniqueness depending on what type of application you are building. Right, we don't target any specific vertical. It's more of a horizontal play where we want to ensure what we're doing is foundational to the works that's possible within any sort of industry or sector. But if you're putting me personally personally on the spot, I have two. Two to me are just um, uh, more important than uh, ma many of the other rich features. Although all of them are rich, coming from a tooling background, starting my my career in IDEs. To me, it's always about developer productivity. So first and foremost is the packaging tool uh, because we wanna uh, remove all of that sort of underlying plumbing that developers have to do to deploy their application. And so if we can simplify that deployment model by allowing an easy tool that allows developers to combine the components, the dependencies and the runtime together in an easy to use uh, model, just accelerates that. And that to me is always attractive. Tools help you solve problems. The second is obviously the migration to GitHub. 
you know, this was very controversial. I came from a mercurial background. That's what uh, is imprinted on my brain. Um, I'm, I'm used to that sort of uh, that environment. But we know the world around us is evolving and changing. And right now, the propensity is for developers to get their bull bills and pull their bills uh, automatically from GitHub. And so I think this is a pivotal turning point for, for Java in that it is a demonstration that uh, as, as um, in environments change to get your uh, bills, we're adapting to that as well. 